Thanks. Yes, we can. You can speak. So we have the next two cases. We will be two partial nephrectomies. The first case is a 71-year-old man. And on the year 2002, on an ultrasound scan of the kidney, they found a small 2-centimeter tumor on the right kidney. At five years, there is still slowly growing this tumor, 28 millimeter. So he underwent an RM. But with surprise, on February of this year, there's a three centimeter tumor on the right kidney, but also a 28 millimeter tumor on the left kidney. And so you can see on the right side, this three centimeter tumor, but on the controllateral side, another tumor. So we decide to handle first the right kidney tumor. No, she, no, she double. So you can see again on the right side, this three centimeter tumor, on the left side, this other tumor. And this is the vascular phase on the right side. And you can see on this side, the left, the, the right tumor reaching the excretory waste probably near the helum. Again, a nice view of the right cancer and of the left cancer. So at the renal scan, both kidneys are working fine. As you can see, so we have a bilateral renal cancer T1A. And today we are treating the right tumor, and Dr. Gill is performing a right laparoscopic partial nephrectomy. Okay, Vito, I'm going to start off by showing the CT scan again. So maybe the camera person can show me the, show us the CT scan and I want to point out some things. Who, who, who all are moderating? Yes. But I, you know, I don't know if they are showing the whole slides. I just want to make a few points. If they just put the cam, they have a camera or no? Yeah, if you can turn that around, that'll be fine. Indy, Indy this is Michael Marburger speaking. I'm hello. I'm coming from down here. Hi, hello. This, do you hear me? This is yes. Michael. Hi, how are you, sir? Hello. This, this. What a pleasure. Hi, and hi, Michael. Hello. What a pleasure. Uh, Indy, we've seen the slides. You are doing a retroperitoneal or a transperitoneal? Transperitoneal. Okay, why wouldn't you do a retroperitoneal in this it's situation? It's an anterior tumor. It's an anterior tumor. Okay, and otherwise so in the posterior you, you, you do not... So okay. Typically, Michael, I like to do a partial nephrectomy transperitoneally every time I can. Even for posterior tumors, we will typically go trans and then flip the kidney around to get the... Uh, posterior tumor anterior 
I just feel that you know, we are pretty comfortable doing retroperitoneoscopy, but for partial nephrectomy, I just feel that transperitoneal gives me the necessary angles and suturing space, etc., etc. So just feel that this is a superior way to do it. Okay, but again, there are different the people who do it different ways, and I understand. Uh, Indy, just to review this, you would always do a laparoscopic partial nephrectomy for a tumor of this size, or are there indications where you would not and you would op opt for open? Open. Well, for uh, a three centimeter tumor, when. Uh, go ahead. Uh, what are your indications for an open? Open. Well, my indications for open are yeah. pretty limited. Um, it would have to be a really difficult case. What is a really, you don't have a difficult case. Well, I've, I'll be learning from you, well, Michael. What is I mean, your uh, so, for example, let me give you an idea. Uh, in about 200 partial nephrectomies last year, I felt that there were two patients out of the 200 that uh, would be better served by open because of tumor complexity. So, I mean, it would have to be, for example, a completely intrarenal, completely central tumor with uh, a, a, in a patient who has azotemia, etc. I take the hook. No, this is good. With, with azotemia, etc., that would, uh, you know... But other than that, it's not a big deal. Okay, we okay. saw the preoperative workup. Is there anything you want to add to that? Yes, I just want to show you the to CT the scans once again. I just want to show you the CT scans once again. Can I have a... Yeah, this is good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So this is, as you've seen, a bilateral tumor. I just want to focus in on the tumor itself. So this is the first cut that you can see. Yes? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. And now this is the second cut. We see it. And, now this is the second and cut. these are four millimeter cuts. These are four millimeter Actually, these are one centimeter cuts. So these are 10 millimeter cuts. But look at this tumor. It is going all the way up to the renal sinus fat. That is the inner margin of the tumor. And that's the renal sinus fat. So the main point I want to make yeah, here, nice let's look at this again, right here. Can you come here? You can see this? Maybe see it. Okay, so lo look at this tumor you, going up to there you read and moving on over here. It is abutting the renal sinus. So I anticipate entry into the collecting system and the renal sinus fat, etc. Okay. Perfect. Do you routinely place a ureteral catheter preoperatively? Yes, we routinely do. Yes, we routinely do. Bipolar would be perfect. Bipolar? There's a, this patient has had every little thing oozing. Every little thing oozing. But so we've kind of gone slow a little bit. But so we've kind of gone slow a little bit. But I think things are under control. So just well, this little like teeny. Nice for you here. Professor Gill. Yes. Professor Gill. Yes, sir. Uh, how is uh, in uh, your opinion it is a, a, a central tumor or is a cortical medullar tumor? I, I'm sorry. Is this a central tumor? How to classify? Yes, so this is a central tumor. Yes. Central tumor is defined as a tumor that abuts the pelvic calicial system or renal sinus fat on preoperative CT. And this one does, so this is a central tumor. So now what I'm trying to do, so let's just show you what we've done so far. So we got started transperitoneally, and as I was reflecting the liver up, so show them the liver retractor. Here is the liver retractor going in from a port through the ziphoid, uh, ziphy sternum and going over here and we've just clamped it down. But as we were reflecting the liver up, 
uh, it's real flimsy attachment. So I had a little liver capsular tear right there. So basically, we just turned up the bovi to 120 and zapped it, and then we put some flow seal. So that is step one. Now, so after that, move back, please, Munish, let's show them. You can actually remove this. Oh, leave it here for a bit. So show them the uh, colon. I mean, the, show them the colon and the duodenum. So here is the colon, right there. And so we've reflected all this over, and here is the duodenum, right here. That this is duodenum, and that's vena cava. And so some little oozer here. We did not use any electrocautery for that. We just put clips because we don't want to hurt the bowel. Okay, then after we got this up, then basically we went between the ureter and the vena cava. That's the vena cava right here, vena cava right here, and the ureter right there. That's the ureter. Michael, you can see that, sir? Yes, we see it very well. Okay, so ureter and so us. So here we go. Here is the uh, renal vein. And I, I, I clamped the hilum end block. And so basically when we see the renal vein, we stop. And then posteriorly, see I have freed it all up. See that? All freed you do up. Not, you do not selectively... You do not selectively uh, clamp the renal artery. No. Clamp you, the artery and the vein together. Uh, even, even though that's known to sort of promote ischemic damage. I, I don't know, Michael, if it's really been shown that. <clears throat> uh, uh, personally, I feel that the retrograde perfusion from the vein, which is venous blood at negative pressure, mind you, is unlikely. I just don't buy the concept that keeping the vein open somehow perfuses the kidney. I don't buy it. There is no clear-cut animal or human data to substantiate that other than some of your early work and uh, uh, John Fitzpatrick's early work. Can I have the bipolar, please? But uh, <coughs> even open surgically, at least at our place, the artery and the vein are routinely clamped every time, even at our place. So uh, the disadvantages, so the advantages of leaving the renal vein open, uh, sorry, the disadvantages of leaving the renal vein open are the following. <coughs> it bleeds more, slows us down, and increases the real ischemia time. And uh, for a really questionable advantage of, uh, can I have the hook, this thing now? Mm -hmm. Questionable advantage of retrograde perfusion with venous tension uh, blood, uh, I, I just don't feel that uh, if I'm going to do it, I just want to get moving. And uh, so routinely, we clamp the artery in the vein. Over here. And as to why clamp them together and block versus separately, well, it's just more efficacious, leaving some of the sinus fat, hyalur fat, on the renal artery can only be protective from plaque damage, etc. And because we don't dissect out the artery and the vein separately, the chances of having any vascular injury is minimized. And uh, so that's worked very, very nicely for us. Now you're completely dissecting off the fat off the kidney. Yes. Uh, would you always do that even if you have the pedicle secured and you see your tumor to find or identify any other tumors which would have been missed by preoperative imaging? So typically, can I have you a always typically we get CT scanned with three millimeter cuts. And when I have that, I am con if that can't see a, t a satellite tumor, 
intraoperative ultrasound won't either. So at home, a little softer, guys. Guys, shh, 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 shh. no talking. Um, intraoperative ultrasound we perform with or without complete defatting of the kidney. So um, I used to defat the entire kidney. I don't feel it's necessary anymore given modern imaging techniques. And as I said, we insist on three millimeter cuts. And if that doesn't pick up any satellite lesion, then the chances that we're going to pick up anything intraoperative are low. Having said that, we still perform intraoperative ultrasonography to uh, check out for satellite lesions with or without defatting. You now, the one thing we do is maintain fat yeah. over the tumor. The tu that is important. So I'm just going around the tumor now. Usually, do you... I'm sorry? I'm sorry. Do usually, usually, do you mobilize uh, completely the kidney or uh, do you perform an exposition only of the anterior parts of the kidney? We mobilize um, the complete mobilization, as I said. I, I don't feel is necessary in every single case. In some cases, yes, it's needed when we have to rotate the kidney, etc. But typically, we mobilize the area of interest and maintaining fat over the tumor. And uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. As uh, Dr. Marburger's series has shown and our series has shown up to 5 to 8% of these tumors are actually PT3A, unsuspected clinically on CT. So maintaining fat on the tumor is important. So we think this is the tumor right there. And just going around it to tee it up. India, question to clarify your indications. This is a bilateral tumor. Which side would you automatically do first? Or Easy, do you have any the clear easier rules side. There or? We do the easier side so first, this stabilize is the more that kidney. Side. And uh, in, yeah. in this case, and, both. But you were sort of asked to do the more difficult. Yeah, this is the more difficult side. Clearly. Yeah, but typically that's the way we do the easier side. I was even talking with Vito to. If we had gotten an earlier start this morning, we could potentially have done a bilateral single session. We've done that in about three patients. Do you do bilaterals? We've done in three patients uh, bilateral single session. And those are selected, selected patients, of course. So that's the tumor, guys. But you would have to turn the patient around. Yeah. Correct. How Correct. is your patient position now? For 45 degrees. 45 degrees. Yeah. And I haven't, yeah, clean up.
positive margin back, what do you do? Uh, depends. Uh, if you typically, th you think you've got take it all. out another rim, another five millimeter rim of tissue in the entire partial nephrectomy bed. So just basically take out a five, millim five millimeter wide. I mean, they're always, the positive margins are always in the central portion, so you basically have to repeat the procedure. Right, so basically that's exactly what we do. Right, so basically that's exactly what we do. No, one second. Thank you. Manish. Leave it on. So most often we just basically, by the time we are done, most of these wet clips are gone. Uh, Indy, a question. Why don't you just take a slightly wider rim of parenchyma to sort of close it with the sutures over the defect? Uh, that would be uh, the you secondary. Sort of, uh, seem to be that would be the secondary. Oh, I understand, yeah. That would be this the is still the primary central. Correct, correct. The, because I can't just rely on parenchymal apposition for hemostasis. Hemostasis I want with specific figure of eight stitches on the bleeding spots. The, and once we are done with that, typically we don't even need to approximate the parenchyma. Earlier we used to put bolsters and uh, do the parenchymal rhinography routinely. Now I would say 70%, 80% of the time, we don't even have to do it. We just basically come in here, Manish. We just basically sew everything specifically. And once you're done with that, quite often one doesn't even feel the need to put in the bolster these days. Now it's just a bunch of boring suturing, so I mean, if you guys want to put me on the left screen or something and see something more interesting. But I like it, the fact that now no. actually our suturing time has increased because we will not accept any, any using whatsoever. And if it takes me a half hour to sew every single thing down, we will do that. So it's, I think, just some little peridinal stuff, a couple sutures here. Manish, come in. Something here. This one? Immediately to get this one. Okay. Take a separate stitch for that. Okay.
with a profuse kidney, very important to follow the curve of the needle or else it's not pretty. Scissors, please. I'll take the SH needle now, the one that I gave you later. Needle driver for okay, I got it. Okay, good. SH needle, please. A positive margin rate is 2.1 percent, sorry, 1.6 percent for RCC. No, not this, no. SH, the one that I gave you in the end. So uh, in our comparative study of, no, 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 SH needle. Comparative study of uh, open versus laparoscopic partial, our, yes, this one, good. Our uh, positive margin rate for RCT was 1.6 percent versus 1 percent. So now I'm going to bring in an SH needle, 3 and uh, put in some even more precise sutures. Here we go. Let's see what's bleeding. And so therefore you can see that if this level of hemostasis is achieved in the perfused kidney, then understandably, the then understandably the incidence of post artery hemorrhages decrease. This is uh, typically not. The question Vito is asking is we don't put bolsters anymore. The answer is typically not. We don't feel the need to do it. In this case, we probably will just because it's a nice boat shaped defect, literally begging for it. Need a driver? Thank you. You don't have the feeling that you've got to cover up the defect with something, you know. Can you, you would, would you leave the defect open if it weren't bleeding? Yeah, Michael, I mean, uh, so it's an indiv individual decision, but yes, uh, we, as I mentioned, we are getting away from routinely feeling the need to tamponade with a bolster. I mean, once this process yeah. of getting total hemostasis takes a good half an hour and... And uh, once you get it, then the additional pressure tamponade that would be put upon by a, by a bolster somehow feels like we're going to compromise the kidney a little bit. And maybe that's just fantasy, but just trying to fine-tune it even more. Only if we feel we absolutely need the bolster, we put it. So once I get the hemostasis, then we will do the retrograde injection and identify the spot where it leaks and take care of that. That cut through. That's the problem with this smaller stitch. It just cuts through. Maybe I need the bigger needle here, huh? Can I have that CT1 needle, please? One more try. CT1 needle. CT1 needle. 
not going to do it. Okay, CT1 needle, please. Cut. It's kind of boring, but a boring partial nephrectomy is a happy partial nephrectomy. Almost seems perirenal in this. Almost seems perirenal in this. Yeah. And this part of the fat has been oozing the, the entire case, so we'll see. The entire case, so we'll see. Blood loss so far is 450. Blood loss so far but, is uh, but we've even uh, irrigated, Vito. Have you calculated for that? Okay, good. Look, it's almost coming from there. It's almost coming from there. I gotta show this little bleeder who's the boss. Man, looks like we're going to need a bolster to tampon at this one. I'm probably going to need another CT1. Yeah, give me another CT1, please. CT1 stitch, yeah. That pretty much is the last it thing. It seems to be coming from that upper rim there. Right, right here. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Let me just get this finished. Here we go. And 
there's no question that some of this stuff we stir up as we go along and I'm really happy with that, okay with that because I'd much rather it stirs up now than later. I got three needles in there. And because we are able to achieve hemostasis with such certainty, we don't have any problem at all operating on solitary kidneys and… Let's see, I think we are good. No more stitch, no more stitch. The okay, Manish, let's check this out one more time. Needle driver. What is it? Yeah. Uh, Caudal lip. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they can have it here. Okay. Yeah. Right there? Still losing, huh? Basically, you have to show those things shut. Huh? I don't want to show this, sew this crater shut. That's why I went reverse there. That's why I went reverse there.
still a little arterial bleeder in there. God damn it, come in please. Okay, so can I have a Maryland now? Maryland? Excellent job. Now I'm going to go through here. Scissors, please. Hold this, please. Carlo? And Marco? Just hold it tight. Don't let it go. Keep it right there, pull back, Manish. Needle driver. Let go, Marco. Come out. Scissors. Needle driver. One. Two. Two needles out, one to go, suction. Uh, you think we should just put a bolster in? Mm -hmm. Be done with it? Okay. Bolster and be done with it. All right, now I just want to do a quick injection, retrograde injection. Blue injection. Okay, hang on. So don't do it yet. Come in, please, Manish. Okay, and go ahead, inject. Inject. Okay, good. Stop. So that's our site of leakage. Could I get a scissors, please? Get another CT1 stitch. Hopefully one more stitch and we should be done here. Beautiful. Needle driver, please. Excellent. Okay, now get ready to inject once again so that I know exactly where it's coming from. One second, hang on to this. Okay, come in, Manish. Manish. Okay, inject, please. Come in, Manish. Inject. Right there, huh? Okay, good. Yeah. Well, we'll take the box lunch. Mm -mm. 
antenna of this, this damn thing. Is that same thing continuing to Yeah, very, very nice. Unbelievable, huh? Well, it's an Still bleeding. technique. There are problems. The main problem is we can only get in two and a half to three centimeters. Oh, I see what you did. Most, but you see, the problem is the, is the ablation. That's where it yes. bleeds. In. Yes. And this damn thing is continuing to bleed. And you saw that even that simple tumor which I bleed, it bled too. And it's very easy to expose the kidney. Yes. So if you have a bad it's very easy. But the problem is that this is a prototype. It's a little bit of work. No, but it was always superficial. No, uh, no, but it was in, in three cases. If this is the tumor and this is the kidney, the vital tissue was here. And the reason was that the probe, which sort of focus in here, was too close. And now we keep it seven millimeters away, which is very easy to do because you can see that. And because you don't have enough energy here. Better, you think? So if you have this in here, just go the opposite side and wreck it. You have vital tissue. All you have to do is have it a little bit further out. That's what we learned. And we had one patient who had vital tissue down here, but we don't really know why. All the others were gone. To radio frequency is much worse. Ma radio frequency is 40% skipping, even yes, in very small tumors. Some of those tumors will still ultimately die because of reperfusion injury, but it's uh, not very good. Radio frequency is wrong. Slowly he's getting there. He's put a lot of stitches in. Yes, we know that. Yep. 
needle driver. Three yeah, centimeters. Right yeah, yes. now, we only three centimeters. It's going to take a while. <laughs> but I don't understand why he That's what I was thinking. Wet clip, please. And one more CT1. Did I get that SH out? So I've given you all the needles. I think I did. Needle count is okay. You can see it bleeding, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah the incision and then the height of it. Yes. But he doesn't. You see very nicely the difference between a small peripheral two centimeter pin and a three centimeter highlight pin. It's much more difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice.
Now it's coming from there. Okay. Scissors, please. Scissors, please. But we got this baby now. Bottom line, take no shortcuts. Um, yeah, yeah, something like that. Finally, scissors. But the point is, you know, we'll stay as long as it takes to get this done. But the kidney is happy. Kidney is happy, we are happy. Okay, good. So now I will take, I think we should bolster it, it's given us enough of a challenge. So I'll take those uh, bigger stitches, the wet stitches. Happy? Now it looks very good, really. Mm -hmm. Are you going to flush the collecting system once more? Uh, uh, the collecting system? Sure. Good point. Okay. The second collecting system injection has to be gentle because the, s the pelvic elastic system is already full with indigo and if you pre give it too much pressure, you will create a leak where none exists. So go ahead, gentle in in injection please. Okay, stop, good, that's good. So because uh, initially you have to inject a lot to fill up the system, but once it's filled, then the merest whisper would work and so that's good. All right, now, I don't know, I mean, do you want to put a bolster or what do you say? Yeah, flow seal we'll definitely put. Uh, the question is, this has given us... I 
Uh-huh. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that n- not to accept uh, a suboptimal hemostasis. Maybe just one more stitch on this side, flow seal and pressure and that's it. Huh? Yeah, but really there's no place to stick a bolster in. I'll take a C, uh, yeah, CT1 will be good. Just one more. One more on this very edge. You know. So yes, it does make it a little more boring, but that's not bad. Thank you, thank you. Let's talk Mesh. Coming, Manish. Yep, scissors. Okay, flow seal, please, and a surge cell. Needle out. Is our needle count good? Needle count correct? C. Could I have a surge cell, please? No bolster. Just open it up. Search the cell, please. Okay, great. Is Professor Marburger still there? We're still there, yep. Oh, I'm sorry to torture and we're still everybody fascinated. so much. But, Michael, your comments, please. I'd be very interested no, in your comments. Critique, I mean. Very nice. I critique. mean, uh, no, the critique, I mean, I understand it is, of course, a bit bloodier than if you do those sutures in ischemia. Right. And, um, but the better results certainly justify this approach. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, I can really sit down and suture anything and everything that needs that stitch. And when you walk out, of course, one can still have a bleed, but... uh, 
takes longer. No You're going to put in a retrospect needle drain, or yes, we'll just no. I don't need. Are this. you going to put in a, re a? Yes, we're going to put in a drain. Just stick one right in this area. Yeah. And while we haven't really fully freed up the kidney, but nevertheless, makes it easier. Can I have a needle driver, please? Little nephropexy stitch. Wet please. Earlier, when we would put all the uh, put our sutures with the kidney clamped, and then put our bolster in, and then unclamp, you know, all these teeny blood vessels that are bleeding. We won't ever even know about it. And just basically tamponade yeah. would take care of it. And thereby the 4% bleed so rate. Is yeah. And there's also a risk that they may bleed into the collecting system and cause problems there. Yeah, you know, they and don't the pseudoaneurysm aspect and the whole bit. Yeah. You're basically just trying to reconstruct your rotas. Yes, here. sir. Just kind of pexing the kidney down because I did free it up, although not completely. Okay, endo catch back, please. Scissors. Okay, so the, this was our fat that got sheared off the tumor. So we are going to see the pictures in five minutes. Small bowel clamp, some kind of a small clamp, please. No, bigger clamp, bigger clamp. Grazie. No, of course, I'm the devil's advocate. If the tumor comes back in 20 minutes and you've got a positive margin, are you going to redo it again? Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So here's the tumor you can see. I mean, here's the showing you a magnified view it, here. It looks okay. It really looks very good. And so that's our parenchyma, parenchyma, and yeah, that's the tumor right there. It looks very good. But you can see it's nice and intact. Now, are we going to have a parenchymal margin at that spot? Obviously not. I mean, this is the part, remember, that was projecting into the renal sinus fat. So there is no yeah. parenchymal margin at this. And, in, and that's the parenchymal margin. In so fact, the, I have the impression that if you have that macroscopic appearance that you've got it all, it's just as reliable as the histology. I would agree. I would I totally mean, you agree. really see how thin it gets there. I would totally agree. And I mean, basically, Michael. Okay, are there any questions from the audience? Please? I, I just want to say. I just want to say that basically, I've learned all this stuff from you and Andy, and uh, you know, you will not find any uh, philosophical differences whatsoever. And if there are, then we want to hear about Thank it so that much. we can fix it. Yes, it could be. Uh, there was a question: the, the final blood loss. Total blood loss, please. Total blood loss, please. I'm sorry? So she's saying 1,000 in the canister. How much irrigation? We irrigated quite a bit also. I would guesstimate about 600, 650, something like that. Okay. Okay, could I have a knife, please? Okay, Indy, we are, we are now going to move on. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any final comments or anything uh, uh, at this just point? That, just Indy? that, uh, you know, um, 
more and more centers are now performing laparoscopic partial nephrectomy. And uh, <coughs> the two key comments I would make are number one, oh, Manish, go ahead, get it out. Number one, uh, ischemia time is an important, important issue. The previous tenet of 30 yeah. minutes of ischemia being okay is probably not okay. So every effort that we can put to get the ischemia time down to the 10 to 15 minute range is to be encouraged and has probably real merit. And the number two thing I want to say is that saving nephrons is more important than how you do it, open or laparoscopic. There are clear data now that even patients like this one who has, you know, a small tumor and normal looking kidneys, um, chances are there is about a 25 to 30, 25 percent chance that they may have chronic kidney disease. They may have chronic kidney disease as measured by glomerular filtration rate. So nephron sparing is more important than whether you do it open or laparoscopic. And uh, so, you know, the extent, the indications of partial nephrectomy are increasing. We are even doing these for PT1B tumors, four to seven centimeters in size. And so now these days there has to be a very good reason for the kidney to come out. Otherwise we try and nephron spare uh, in, in most candidates. That's pretty much it. Well, thank, thank you very much for an excellent performance and excellent demonstrations. And we'll have you down here for discussion afterwards anyhow. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much. Thank you.